Tzachas Bava Bakama Dav Pei is primarily a Gadata of the Gemara's discussing the halacha that was said by the Chachamim that person should not raise a small farm animal like a sheep or a goat in Eretz Yisrael because they will graze in other people's fields. Previously, we had seen that the reason was because it will destroy the Yishuv. The Gemara is now assuming it's because they're stealing. And the Gemara is going to go through a number of incidents which occurred on that and some related halachas and other agadata that that brings up. So the Gemara begins by saying that the Talmidim asked Rabban Gamliel, is it permitted to raise these animals in Eretz or not? And he said it's mutter. So Gemara asks, and Mishnah clearly says that it's usher. What were they asking? What was he answering? So Gemara says that they were asking, can you keep them? for a short time, not can you raise them, and he said it's permitted as long as they don't go out and graze in the herd like everyone else, but you have to tie it to the legs of the bed. It's the only way it's permitted to keep these animals. Mark on Surprise says it was a story that happened with a tzaddik, a chassid, that he was groaning in his heart, meaning he was very sick, and they consulted the doctors who said that the only solution for him is to drink boiling hot milk every morning straight from, like, fresh from the goat. So they brought him a goat and they tied it at the legs of the bed, Accordance with the halacha, and he was drinking from the goat every morning. And after a few days, the Tamil Chachamim, his Chaverim, came to visit him, and they saw the goat tied to his bed. So they jumped back and they ran away, and they said, There are armed robbers in this house because these are Behema Daka who eat in other people's fields. And how could we go and visit him? So then they went and they checked into him, they did a background. Research and they found that he didn't have any other veyer except for this one. He himself, at the time that he died, he said, I know about myself, I don't have any sin, except for this, that I brought in a goat in Eretz Yisrael, and I violated the words of my chaveir. Now, on a similar note to Mark Hotz, Rabbi Shmuel said that his uh, father's household was amongst those in the upper Galil, the Galil Ha'elyein, and why were those villages destroyed? He said because they used to let their animals graze in the... Chorshin in the forests, and these were animals that were behema daka, which are not allowed. And they also judged Dini Mominis, one judge alone, where you're supposed to have three. Now, the Umar points out that we said on the previous staff that grazing these animals in a Chorsha, in a forest, is allowed. So he explains that they had a forest near their homes, but there was a little private field between the village and the forests, and they would cross through that village, and that's what was not allowed, and therefore was forbidden. Now, the Gemara Kulis Abraisa with some related halachas. So Abraisa says that if you have a shepherd who used to raise these animals, now he decided to do tshuva, he doesn't have to get rid of them all at once and it take a big loss. He could sell them bit by bit, as it makes sense financially. Also, a ger who inherited from his non Jewish family dogs and pigs. So Allah he's not allowed to own them, so he doesn't have to sell them off right away at once, and it take a loss on the value, he's allowed to sell them bit by bit as makes sense. Similarly, the Gemara says somebody makes a nether to buy a house or to marry a woman in Eretz Yisrael, you're not mechaiv him to buy or marry the first thing that comes along, you have to find something that makes sense and is fitting for him. The Gemara quotes an incident that there was a woman who had a son who was giving her a hard time, she decided she wants to get married to free herself from him, so she said the first one, who's going to offer me a marriage proposal, I'm not going to refuse him, and all kinds of improper individuals came and petitioned her for marriage, so the Chachamim heard about it, and they said she's not chayef to marry any of them, she only meant the first one, which is befitting, she doesn't mean the first random uh, man. Now, the Gemara goes further, and it says, just like it's forbidden to raise a behema daka in Eretz Yisrael, it's also forbidden to raise a chaya daka in Eretz Yisrael. Rashi says it means like a deer or a fox. Now, Rabbi Shmuel says here there, are, here there are some that you are allowed to because they are needed to clean the house of mice. So that would be small dogs, cats, monkeys, and something called a chuldois snaim that translates to weasels of the bush. The word snai in modern Hebrew means squirrels, but the Gemara's description here doesn't sound like squirrels. And uh, again, Rabbi Shmuel explains the reason is because they are good mousers. The Gemara wants to know, what's Chuldas Snaim? What are these weasels of the bush? So Yehuda says, it's a Sharza Charza, and some says it's a Charza. The Gemara explains what this means. It's like a radant that uh, is chirates, it scurries on the floor. So the Gemara says, Charza... Uh, Chartza is that it has very small 
legs, and therefore it's, it's low to the ground. It's, uh, it eats and it forages between the bushes. And shartza means that it has very thick legs. Now, yeah. Yehuda says that we in Vava, we were a couple upon ourselves like Eretz Yisrael, not to raise uh, small farm animals, sheep's, uh, sheep and goats. So when says, Rav Adabar Ava said to Rav Huna, what about yours? Apparently he had some sheep or goats. So he said, mine, my wife, Chayva, that was her name, she watches them very carefully. Umar says Rav Adabar Ava wasn't happy with that answer, and he cursed Chayva, because she's empowering Rav Huna to do this wrong. And he said that uh, Chayva should end up having to bury her sons. Umar says that all the years Rav Adabar Ava was alive, then Rav Huna never had any living children, any children who grew up to adulthood from Chayva. Some say a different version of this is that Rav Huna said that Rav said that we made ourselves in Vava like Eretz Yisrael as far as the halacha of the Behema Daka only from when Rav arrived in Bavel. Now the quotes an incident that happened with Rav, Shmuel, and Rav Asi. Now, they all went to a simcha together. The Gemara has says either it was a bris or was a pidin haben. The Gemara calls a bris shavua haben after seven days for the sun, and a pidin haben. The Gemara calls Yeshua haben to redeem, as if to save the ch- child. Now, all three Tamir Chav and Rav Shmuel and Rav Asi arrived at the simcha together, and they had a problem as to who was going to go in first and who was going to go in ahead of any of the other ones. Rav said he's not going to go in before Shmuel. That's because of an incident in which Rav was sick. Shmuel, who was a doctor, was trying to cure him and was causing him pain. And he accidentally said, or he he threw out in the pain, that whoever is causing me this agony should never have any sons. And Shmuel Taka never had any sons. He had daughters only. So because of that, Rav wanted to show deference to Shmuel, and he never entered before Shmuel. Um, however, Shmuel can't go in before Ravasi because Ravasi was a greater Talmud Chacham than Shmuel. And Ravasi can go in before Rav because Ravasi was a Talmud of Rav. So we had a problem. Who was going to go in first? Couldn't be Rav because he couldn't go before Shmuel. Couldn't be Shmuel because he couldn't go before Ravasi. And couldn't be Ravasi because he was a Talmud of Rav. So what was going to happen? So the only solution was that two would go in and one would have to stay back and wait a long time after. So it's not that he's going in in front of him but that he wasn't ready to go in yet, and he went in much later. So the question is, who was going to be the one who was going to have to stay back? So Gemar says that they decided it would be Shmuel. And Rav and Ravasi would walk in together. Rav would go first because he was the Rebbe, and Rav would not be in front of Shmuel because Shmuel wasn't going to go until a long time afterwards. Now, what ended up happening was, as they were speaking, a cat came and it cut off or it bit off the hand of a child. Now, Rav gave a drasha, not the, Gemara, the Rishonim say not in response to this incident, but Rav gave a drasha about the dangers of keeping cats, and he said that it's you're permitted to kill a cat that's around, it's forbidden to keep a cat, and if you steal someone else's cat, there's nothing wrong with that because you're trying to get rid of him, and if you find a lost cat, there's no mitzvah to return it to his owner. So the Gemara says, what's the chiddush in all of these? If you're allowed to kill the cat, certainly you're not allowed to keep the cat. The Gemara says, no, you might think you're allowed to kill the cat, but you're also allowed to keep the cat. It's not also to keep the cat. That's why we have to add extra chiddush, that it's also to keep a cat. The Mar asks, Vaita, if there's no way to steal it, certainly you shouldn't return it. So Mar says, no, you may think you return it, not that it should be kept alive, but that the owner could at least have the skin. The Mar asks, Akasha, how could I say that it's also to own a cat and to keep a cat? We had, just before the Bryso, we are, we had a Shimon Ben who said that you're allowed to keep small dogs, cats, monkeys, and the bush weasels because they clean out the house from mice. So you see you're allowed to keep a cat. So it says, no, there's two types of cats. There's a black cat and a white cat. The white cat is much more dangerous than the black cat. You're allowed to keep a black cat. You're not allowed to keep a white cat. So Mara asked what the incident that happened here with uh, Rav was actually a black cat. So you see that Rav was referring to a black cat when he's saying that it's usher. So the Gemara answers is still two types of black cats. The black cat that's the child the offspring of a white cat, that's a problem. However, black cat from a black cat is not a problem. So Mara says this question was actually asked by Ravina. Ravina said a black cat descended from a white cat, what's the halacha? So Mara says, no, he was asking about a black cat, son of a white cat, son of a black cat. Rav's story was a black cat, son of a white, son of a white. That, even though it's black, is absolutely forbidden. The Gemara now quotes three halacha said by children of Papa, 
However, there's quite a few lines discussing who said it exactly. So the Gemara says it was said by Rav Achabar Papa in the name of Rabbi Ababar Papa in the name of Rav Adabar Papa, according to one version. According to the other version, it's Rav Ababar Papa in the name of Rav Chiyabar Papa in the name of Rav Achabar Papa. And according to the third version, it's Rav Ababar Papa in the name of Rav Achabar Papa in the name of Chanina Bar Papa. Well, the three halachas are as follows. Number one, you're allowed to be mispal on Shabbos is for a refuah from shechin, from blisters, boils, rashes, things of that nature. Second thing, a door which closes is not going to quickly open. That's referring to somebody who loses a job or an opportunity. As far as Hilkel's tree law, keep in mind that it's not going to open so fast. And the third halacha, somebody who purchases a house in Eretz is allowed to write a shtar mechir, a contract of sale, even on Shabbos. Now, the Gemara has... Hashas. I'm going to first ask on the halacha that you're allowed to do the tefillah for shechin. So the word that's used here is masrian. There's two types of tefillah. There's masrian and tzaykin. So masrian is an entire procedure which involves chatzaytzeris, trumpets, and chayfreis, described in Masechah's tainis. Tzaykin would just be tehillim and tefillah without anything else. So the here says you're allowed to do masrian. So I'm going to ask of a brisa that says that other types of peronius, such as these blisters and skin issues, or locusts, flies, hornets, mosquitoes, scorpions, snakes, all these things that you're not allowed to do masriyim, you're only allowed to do tzaykim. In the kasha here, we said you're allowed to do masriyim for these blisters, and they said not. So my answer is not. In the kasha, there's two types of blister, moist, wet blisters, and dried blisters. Like Yeshua ben Levi said that the blisters that Baruch Hu brought on Mitzrayim had both problems. It was moist on the outside and dried on the inside, like it says, vahi shechin, Next, the uh, whoever it was had said that the doors close on someone is not going to quickly open. What is that about? So Marzutra said it's referring to smicha. Ravashi said it just means anybody who bad things happen to him is not quickly going to be good things happening to him. Rachmi Difti said is never going to have good things happening to him. Whereas it's not true, just Rav Achami, if he's speaking from his own experience, that he, uh, Rashi explains he was appointed in in Parakashutfin in, in Baba Basra. It says he was appointed to be the Rosh Shiva, and it didn't work out the right way. Now, the Gemara continues, we said that if you buy a house in Eretz you're allowed to write a Shtar on Shabbos. The Gemara says, how could that be? You're allowed to be Mechal Shabbos. This is no, like Rava said, over there you tell a Nachri to write it, and, um, and that's what it means here. You're allowed to tell a Nachri to write it, even though there's an Isidur Abanan of Amir Akam telling a Nachri to do a Malacha for you, and because of Yishav Eretz Yisrael, they did not make the Gzeira. This is Rosh Hashanah Nachmeni, named Rav Yenison, somebody who purchases a city in Eretz Yisrael, they force him to buy roads for all four directions leading to it as well, also because of the mitzvah of Yishav Eretz Yisrael.